What's up everybody, Jason Boone here from premiumbeat.com. Today I'm going to show you how you can take control of your text layers in Adobe After Effects using text animators. In particular, we'll be creating this. Text animator. So let's get started. Working with text in After Effects is one of the most exciting features of the program in my opinion. And there's a lot you can do with a text layer just utilizing the transform properties alone. I mean there's quite a few properties here you can animate and keyframe and have a lot of good results with. But if you really want to take full control over these text layers, uh, it's really beneficial to learn how to use the text animators. And text animators, what text animators do, they allow you to edit each character or edit the text layers by character or by line or by word so you can really start to take specific control over these text layers. So let's go and recreate our little animation here using text animators and uh, it will take a few steps but by the end of it you should feel comfortable with using text animators and creating your own motion graphics. So now the first thing I want to do is create a new text file. I will type out text animator and I will put it into position here. And if you want to look at the font, it's simply this font here. If you wanted to follow along and recreate what I'm creating here. Okay, so we have our text layer. If you drop down here, we have two sections. We have transform and then we have the text information here. Now if you open up text, there's a few options here, but if you look over here to the right, there is an animate button and now if we click that these are all of our text animator properties so we can basically take control of any of these properties you want so if we look back at our uh, at our animation that we created there are a few I think there's three or four different properties that were that were animating so I'm going to go add each an, like I'm going to add an animator for each property and then we'll go from there. So this is the first step is to add the animators. So the first thing we want to do, let's let's look at this animation one more time. I actually have the sequence here. So let's look at this one more time. Okay, it comes up in position and then the text animator so there's a rotation, there's a rotation on each word. Then there's a line spacing animation and then there is a tracking animation. Now again, if you look, the position is simply a transform. Uh, it's under the transform. This is not a text animator, and I'll explain why in a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and, and add these three text animators to our new sequence here. So if we go to animate and select line spacing, and if you look down here, now we have an animator. So this animator has a range selector. And you would think of range selectors like mask. You can specify which characters or which, which part of the text layer you're going to affect. I'm going to go ahead and rename this line spacing. You can rename, copy, and delete animators. Okay, so we have line spacing. And now we want a rotation. Okay, so we'll rename this rotation. And then we want, what was our final one? It was tracking. So we want to add tracking. Okay, so we have our three animators here. Now the way we want to do this is I'm going to put my text. I, I, want, to, I want to basically put it in its beginning position of the animation. So if, if you remember at the beginning of its animation, let me just keep this sequence open, our reference sequence. At the beginning of our animation, it's down below, but it's it's rotated 90 degrees, the line spacing, so we can see it here. And then our ending position is here. So this is how our text is now in the new sequence. And I want to take all the properties and put it in this position. So that's what I'm going to do. So if we go back to our sequence here, so I'm going to go to these one by one. I'm going to go to the line spacing. And if you look down here, there's a range selector, and then there's line spacing. We're just going to adjust the properties right now. Then we'll adjust the range and animate it in the next few steps. So again, the first step is we're just adding the animators and putting them in their beginning position. So let's say we want this at Y position of 250. That's a good starting point. We'll close line spacing. Now for the rotation, select the rotation, which is 90 degrees. 
close that. Then we'll go to the tracking. And let's say we want, I think it's about 75. Yeah, we'll do 75. Okay, so there's our beginning position. For step two, we are going to mess with our range selectors and adjust them and basically add keyframes to our range and start the animation. So let's begin with line spacing here. Now if we open up range selector, we have start, end, offset, and advanced. Now basically what this is, again, if we if I move this in to zero, watch what happens. It takes it to the beginning point, to the start point. So all I really need to do is animate this in position. So if I put a keyframe here, and we're going to time this a little bit later. We're, going to, we're just going to add the keyframes right now, and then for step three, we're going to fine tune it and time our animation. So I'll go down a little bit in the timeline, and I'll bring this to zero. So now we have an animation. And if you look here, this is our range selector. It's going character by character. But the characters don't really matter because this is this has to do with lines. So, but you can see if uh, on the next, uh, you'll see with rotation that it's actually affecting the characters. But again, this is line, so it doesn't matter. So we have the animation for line spacing. Now we'll drop down rotation, open up range selector, and we're going to edit the end of this rotation. So we have our endpoint set. Then actually let's bring it over here after the other animation so it's not too confusing. Now we want to bring this down to zero and you're seeing what's happening. We don't want it to do by character. We want it to, we want it to do by line or each word because if you look back at our reference it rotates by words. So we'll go back and if you look there's an advanced section here of our range selector. So I'm going to open that up and then we have all of these options here and I can basically switch these from characters to words or lines. So if we switch to characters let's see what happens. Or if we switch to words let's see what happens. Okay there it is. So we have that. That's good to go. And we could fine tune this. There's a there's a variety of different options here, but these uh, I, I don't want to give you too much information because these text animators are really really in depth. The the capabilities and the, the of what you can do with these text animators is pretty amazing. So that's why I want to start you off with something kind of simple, and then if you practice, you can you can kind of find out yourself what you can do with these things. Okay, and you go down to the next property, which is tracking, and we'll set a keyframe for our end take it out a few seconds, bring it to zero, and that that actually looks pretty good. We do this one and then this one, and okay, so all of our keyframes are set for our animation. Now, for the next step, we will time all of this. Okay, to help me time this, I have a couple of sound effects that I've added, and these sound effects, um, if I hit the, the shy button here, I had these hidden, so I'm going to select all of these and I've already edited this just for the purposes of this tutorial and what they are they're the these are server servo motor noises and they're all placed and timed correctly so now we just need to edit these keyframes to to kind of time our animation and make everything look good and you can find all of these sound effects at premium beat except for the final ending where it, the, it says the word text animator. I made that. So, okay, for the first section, so now now we need to simply time this. Again, let's go to our reference here. It has a position animation, and then it goes up, it rotates, then the line spacing, then the tracking. Okay, so tracking is last. Let's go ahead and grab tracking. If I hit U, shortcut key U, it shows me all of my... Um, keyframes, but it's showing range selector. So I can actually rename the range selectors as well. So let me do that real quick because it's not showing me my animator. So I'm going to name that tracking. I will name this rotation. And to rename it, I'm just hitting enter like you would with any layer. And this one is line spacing. Okay, so again, tracking is at the end, so let's move that back to here. I think it's here. 
kind of rough that in. And then we have rotation was second, line spacing was after that. Okay, so let me see. These are, so if we look here, I'm just trying to rough this into the sound effects here. So let's kind of take a look here. So this, each, so there's two sound effects here, and each line is gonna go in conjunction with that. Let's take a quick look. Text animator. Okay, it's it's pretty close. And now I'm gonna do the beginning. So for I'm gonna do the position animation here, which whoops, let me close that. Okay, so it's pretty much roughed in. Now I'm just going to go to the text animator layer or our, or our text layer, and then I'm going to go down to transform because when I'm for this animation, I'm just going to simply have the the text come into place here from off screen. And since it's uh, since it's the whole layer, I don't need, really need to use an animator. I can just really quickly down and dirty add a position uh, keyframe and put it in position here. And here we go, final final piece. Text animator. So there you go, text animator. I still need to kind of fine tune some of these keyframes here into place, but I mean, you saw how quickly I put this together. And one other thing to notice is I said these range selectors are like masks. And what that means is you can you can actually use these to layer up text and you can layer up the same text and animate only certain parts and you can go pretty crazy and and figure out oh for instance let me just show you something really quick i had a wiggle project and i i layered up i had a two range selectors uh and i had added a there's a wiggly selector and i basically had this effect going on just the word caffeine which is pretty cool so I won't get into the specifics of this but just to show you some of the capabilities of, of what you can do all right I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and be sure to check out premium beat for high quality royalty free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects <laughs>